Hey, this is Daniel from Matarama. For the next couple of videos, we're going to be hitting the streets of New York City and talking about street photography. So street photography is a growing trend now. People have been doing it for a long, long time, but now, especially with Instagram, people love to walk around the streets and make photos. You can do it really simply with your phone, or you can take a camera like I've got here. We're going to talk a little bit about philosophy and, and technique of street photography, and then we'll make some portraits and do some other things as well. So one thing to keep in mind when you're walking the streets is you don't want to necessarily overload yourself. So what I generally do is take one camera body and one lens. I go for either a normal or a slightly wide lens, but if you like to have variety, you could always use a zoom. So there's a few different types of street photography that I see people doing that we can talk about here. One is just kind of walking around looking for cool stuff. That can be cool uh, interactions of people on the street. That could be some graffiti on the wall or something trash on the ground. It could be so many different things. Beautiful pieces of light coming across a building. You just should always be aware. You're just looking around constantly for anything that could be beautiful. You know, and make sure you have a nice big memory card. Take lots of pictures because when you go out to shoot street photography, you're, you know, you're not gonna get a great shot every time. You wanna really, really take a lot of pictures and see uh, the whole city around you to create a story. If you use kind of the basic storytelling techniques, you can get, uh, go a lot further with the street photography. So that is you want to shoot a wide shot, a medium shot, and a close up. So whenever I walk up to something, like let's say I see a really cool building, I'll step back and make a nice wide shot of the building, and then I'll come in closer to get some details, and maybe I'll do a medium shot or a portrait in front of it or something like that. Putting those pictures together is going to be a much nicer story than just one single photo. One favorite subject of street photographers, and me especially, is people. I love the variety of people in the streets of New York City. And there's lots of different ways you can do it. You could just be walking around with your camera, you see something happening, you take a quick snapshot, you can walk up and start conversing with somebody and ask them to make their portrait. So many different ways. Remember that if somebody's in the street, at least in the US, if somebody's in the street in a public place, you can photograph them, as long as you're not going to use the pictures commercially. So don't, uh, don't get in their face and be a problem, but at the same time, you don't have to be too worried if you're just gonna put it on your personal portfolio or, or your Instagram. If you are a commercial photographer, or you think you wanna sell these images commercially, you definitely wanna carry around some model releases, a simple model release, and uh, there's some apps for that that you can download as well to have it in your phone. It could be as simple as asking the person uh, you know, for the rights to use the picture just because they want to give it to you, or a lot of times you get their information so you can send them a copy of the picture. That way, you're giving them something for their time. So as I said, one of my favorite subjects to photograph on the street is people, and I love to make portraits, but if I'm walking around with just my camera and my lens, I don't have all my lighting tools to really be able to shape the light. So what do I do when I encounter somebody and I want to make their portrait? I'm gonna show you some tips now to get better lighting outside. So here I am in the street here, I have Jeff here, and the first thought most people have is if you're uh, out on a bright sunny day and you find a subject to photograph, you should put them just in the shade. Now we're in the shade here, and I have to say this is not very good light. If, I, if, I, if you look at the shadows coming down, it's still, it's very flat and it's in Jeff's face. So I can actually do that. When I'm doing quick street photography, a lot of times I'll leave my camera on aperture priority. These cameras have really good built-in meters, so they'll be able to make the photo that I need from there. Um, I'm gonna set it around 2.8 so I get a little bit of detail in the background, uh, but not so much that if somebody walks by in the background, they'll also be in focus. So here I am with Jeff. I have a couple of different choices. We're kind of near this wall here. I can either get the street in the background behind him uh, and frame him up on one side. So I'll do that for one, assuming he's patient, right? But I've got this kind of ugly truck back there and, and I don't really care for that. I want a nice clean portrait. I want to catch his character. So I'm just gonna come this way and now my background becomes the wall, right? And I can now shoot Jeff so now I've taken him out of the environment completely. I just have a nice portrait of Jeff. So depending on what you're looking for, you could do either thing. Since I just encountered him on the street here, I don't care about this background, that might be better for me. But like I said, this light is kind of flat and muddy. What I really would do in this situation is I'm looking across the street and I see the sun's over there. I'd much rather be where the sun can, where I can have a little bit of contrast in my shot. So we're gonna walk across the street and I'll show you how to work with the sun. So here we are right in front of Adorama, coincidentally enough. Um, and the sun's out. So of course the sun's right in Jeff's face. This is probably the worst way to shoot somebody, but we'll take a picture to show you. He's very squinty, the deep shadows in his eyes. Oh yeah, that's a ter terrible, terrible photo. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Jeff's got good personality, it's really just not coming through here because of the sun. So one thing I can do is I can spin him around the other way and do a backlighting. So basically shoot the shadow side of him. So if I just spin around, Okay, already that's much nicer. So now the light on his face is a little bit more, more flat. Uh, the background's brighter, he pops out for some separation. But still, it's a little bit muddy. I don't really like that completely shadow side and I don't have a reflector because I'm just out here with my camera. But what I can do is, in New York City especially, there's all kinds of scaffolding everywhere. So if I take Jeff and I put him under the scaffolding, we're under the scaffolding and you can see on the ground, you can see the line of where the shadow is. So if I put Jeff right at the edge of the shadow so that he's in the shade, come step forward, 
But what's happening is the sun is bouncing off the ground and coming up and giving him fill inside of his face. It's basically a free reflector. So if I come in here, and there we go. Now I've got nice even light on his face. It's not deep dark shadows, but I've got like a reflector kicking up. So I have a brightness in his eyes and a decent contrast. And also because outside the scaffolding is bright, it's bright behind him. So I have nice separation there. So that's just an example of what you can do out here in the street. Find a great subject, look for the great light. So in the next few episodes, we'll get a little bit more advanced with some of these techniques. Be sure to subscribe to Adorama TV, and I'll see you next time on set.